welcome back to my channel and welcome to my kitchen. For dinner tonight, I am making my famous meatloaf. And when I think of the ultimate comfort food, the first thing that pops to my mind is always meatloaf. So the recipe I have is delicious, I promise you. If you wanna know how I make it, then please keep watching. So before I start cooking, before I start preparing my food, the very first thing I do is I always preheat my oven if it's required. The last thing I want to run into and the last thing I want to wait on is the oven to heat up when my food is ready to go in. I'm always hungry as it is, so why would I want to wait any longer? It's a good habit to get into, and for this recipe, we're going to preheat our oven to 350 degrees. I'm going to go over the list of ingredients you need for the meatloaf, but I will also put them in the description box below as well as the directions so you have all that nice and convenient. So the first thing you need is your ground beef. If you want to use turkey meat, you can also do that because I know a lot of people like to do ground turkey as well. Just kind of a personal preference. But for my recipe, I'm using ground beef. Next, I am using a green bell pepper. I love the taste of bell pepper. I put it in so much stuff and in my meatloaf, it is just going to add the perfect amount of extra flavor, has a little bit of a bite to it, and that's what I want. So one green bell pepper. You're going to need one medium-sized onion. You're going to need one egg, and the egg is for the mixture. It's going to help keep it all together while it's baking. In the mixture, I also use plain breadcrumbs. If you have seasoned breadcrumbs or Italian, that'll work too. I always just normally stick with plain because you can always add your own flavors and seasonings to kind of customize it yourself. So plain breadcrumbs. And I always add in a little bit of grated Parmesan cheese. And I'm gonna use garlic powder, Lowry's, which I pretty much use in everything. It's really good if you haven't tried it. And of course, the normal salt and pepper. I'm going to use Worcestershire sauce. This is one of the secret ingredients that you have to have in your meatloaf, in my opinion. I love Worcestershire sauce, so don't forget that. I also use ketchup, or if you don't want to use ketchup, you can also use just regular tomato sauce, whatever you prefer. And I'm going to use a little bit of whole milk, or if you want to use 2% or fat-free, whatever you prefer. This will help give it a little bit more moisture because it is going to bake a lot of the juices will obviously evaporate, so you want to add that back. And that is it for the ingredients. As far as the dishes you're going to need to cook with, you're going to use a mixing bowl. This is just to mix everything together. And you're going to need a pan, something along these lines. This is a little bit of a deeper pan. This is specifically made for um, loaf style breads if you want to bake bread or meatloaf. So I am using, this is a five by nine. This is by Rachel Ray. I love it. I use it all the time. It works great. And the last thing is a little bit of olive oil. We're going to coat the pan right before we obviously put the meatloaf in to bake. So olive oil. And that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and get everything started. While the oven is preheating, I'm going to go ahead and start preparing my vegetables. I'm going to dice up one green bell pepper, and I've already washed this, and I changed my mind on the onion. I'm going to use a purple onion instead. The yellow onion works perfectly also, but I absolutely love purple onion, so I'm going to use this this time. You can do whatever you want. Yellow is just as good, but we'll go with the purple for tonight. So I usually just slice the bell pepper down the side like that, and then I pull out the seeds and discard them. Grab your knife and start slicing. I tend just to eyeball my ingredients. Normally when I cook, it's something I've always done. I don't know, I don't follow recipes 100% how they're written. But, um, you know, you can do whatever you want. I always improvise. That's kind of my thing anyway. But the other stuff I think of when I think of comfort food is macaroni and cheese. Of course, everyone loves macaroni and cheese. Um, 
think of mashed potatoes. Those would all be really good options along with your meatloaf. Our bell peppers done. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and dice up my onion. For the onion, what I like to do is I like to cut it in half normally. I don't know, I feel like every time I chop something, I do it different each time, but whatever you're comfortable with. And then you wanna take, obviously, the outside layers off. There we go. And I leave one side intact because when I chop it, it helps make sure it all stays together. So what I do is the long lines here, I usually make several little slices, then I go back, turn it around, and then dice it up. So, so I make several little long cuts. I'm going to dice it up and then it'll be perfect. So because I did switch from the yellow to the red onion, I may not need to use the entire onion itself. So I'm going to start with about half. And as I mix it up, if I feel like I need to add more, I will. But this way it's not too overpowering because it has a little bit more of a kick than the yellow onion. Our vegetables are ready to go. I'm going to take your bowl and your meat. I'm going to open it up and plop it down on in that bowl. There we go. Discard all the trash. And I'm going to take my rings off and wash my hands once more. I don't think they'll come off. <laughs> there we go. Now we're ready to start building all the ingredients together. Your best tools you can use that you have are your hands, and that's what I'm going to use tonight. Don't be afraid. I know it's messy, but you can always wash your hands. It's the best way to make sure everything is mixed evenly. So go ahead and start on doing it. What I'm gonna do is add a couple handfuls at a time of my vegetables. I'm gonna start mixing it up really good. I don't wanna go in with too much at once just because it makes it a little bit harder to mix up. Plus I can gauge better if I want to not use as much of what I've already chopped up. It's easier, oops, <laughs> it's easier to add ingredients than take away. So this is something that it should look like to start off. I'm gonna add some more, because I could definitely use more. And at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and start adding in the ingredients. So I'm gonna start with my garlic powder. Just eyeball it a little bit there, but I will put measurements in the description so it's easy for you guys. Some Lowry's, salt, fresh cracked pepper. I know it seems like there's a lot of ingredients, but trust me, they're all necessary. They all serve a purpose. Tastes so good with it. I'm gonna add down my cheese. And my breadcrumbs. Again, I'm just eyeballing it, but I'll list measurements and all that for you guys. Don't worry. The breadcrumbs will also help keep the meatloaf intact give it some more substance, more flavor. I'm gonna add my egg now. Thank you. This color day. Good. Once you add the egg, you can really tell that it's coming together because it gets everything nice and mixed up really well. It makes it a little bit easier to mix. Add a few dashes of Worcestershire sauce. and a little bit of my ketchup. And I am gonna add a couple teaspoons of milk. Just mix that in there. I wasn't sure if I would need it, because I was like, well, there's a lot of moisture already, but 
better to be safe than sorry. You don't want to end up with a dry to the bone meatloaf. Now because I have everything all mixed up, I want to prepare my pan that I'm going to put it in. So I'm going to set that off to the side. I'm going to grab my baking dish and my olive oil. I'm just going to drizzle a little bit in the pan. Make sure it gets coated on all the sides. The next thing I'd like to do is form the shape of the meatloaf before I put it in the pan. So I'm going to move this out of the way. You can take your meatloaf out. Put it on your cooking sheet, your chopping board, cutting board, and you're just going to knead it around, and you're just going to make it fit that shape. Pretty simple. Doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to change form anyway when it cooks, but if you can help it stay intact a little better, then do so. And just make sure there's no big cracks. If there are, then you just want to knead it up a little bit more. You want it to be kind of nice and smooth. So, looks like a loaf of bread. <laughs> Gently pull it up, grab your pan, and plop that bad boy down in there like that. And that's perfect. And I did want to add that a lot of people like to run uh, strips of bacon across the top of the meatloaf before they put it in to help cook with it. The flavor is absolutely wonderful. I just am not gonna use that tonight. I'm gonna save that for another recipe I'm gonna do later this week, but it is very good if you wanna add bacon, so you can always make that an option. So my oven is preheated. I'm gonna go ahead and stick the meatloaf inside, and I'm gonna let it cook for about 45 minutes to an hour. I'm gonna check it periodically to make sure, you know, it's not overcooking as we get closer to the 45 to an hour mark. So let's go ahead and stick it in the oven. Okay, so let's go ahead and check this out. Oh, yes. Can you see that? Oh, my goodness. Look at this. I'm so excited. It smells so good. I really wish you guys could smell how good it is right now. I can't wait to eat it. So I'm going to let it sit for a few minutes and then I'll slice into it, see how it looks, and test a piece. Alrighty, here we go. I'm going to cut right into the end. Look at that. That's perfect. I mean, I don't know if I could have done it any better, to be quite honest with you. I'm going to scoop up a little bit of the sauce because it didn't make it to the end. But okay, I just cut my piece. I'm going to test it out. I can't explain how good it smells, you guys. Seriously. That is amazing. Truly amazing. <laughs> I'm not just saying that because I'm doing a video. I really mean that. Mm. Can't wait to serve it to my husband. He's gonna love it too. Wow, this is so good. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Again, I will list below all the ingredients, directions, all that good stuff so you have it at your disposal. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.